Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We're back with a new disc golf rolling cart. I just made this one hot off the press and uh, I'm gonna walk you through all the tools, the details, supplies, and exactly how I did it. This will be a long video, I'll warn you in advance, but it'll show you how I did all of it, how you can have 23 plus disc. There's built, I use a lot of mid-ranges, so if you're using all distance drivers and fairway drivers, you probably can put 30 in here. Room for supplies like bug spray, sunscreen, then you also have a compartment underneath that you can fit a whole lot of gear and maybe even a little cooler. Really nice wheels, chalk bag, and drink holder. This fits one of those big Nalgene bottles. And uh, you can also put on your power pocket if you got one of those or whatever you have for your putter pouch. And all this showing you in detail on how you can do this yourself so stick around watch the whole thing comment subscribe if you've not done so and uh, let's get it let's get to it here are the tools and the supplies that i used for this project there are quite a few but i'm going to go through all of them this one's an optional one you can get a welder um, if you don't have a welder or don't want to use a welder uh, go ahead and get yourself some cotter pins and use those but i want to make sure i could do that so have all the proper equipment for that jigsaw i used bondo two different types actually the quick one and this one i had the quick one on hand we used a primer and seal and then we used automotive paint and then a clear coat hammer wrench vice grips flathead you'll probably need some sockets depending if you're going to use other equipment i use that ball golf cart that i already had kind of made um, this is just a corner bracket holder actually for a picture frame worked really well uh, some kind of square wood glue for exterior, a tape measure, something to open up your can of Bondo, a number of uh, different drill bits, half inch especially, that gets that uh, axle through, some different tips, and so I have a, a star bit and a Phillips, plenty of gloves. We use two types of cabinet hinges. One's a little cheaper, one's a lot more expensive, so I did two different ones. Uh, some metal screws, these are eight, number eights, nine sixteenths, and then I used one and a quarter inch. You might need to use a, uh, I think that's a 14 millimeter to get the nuts off. Um, I am going to be buying some new wheels for this. I'm not gonna reuse the old lawnmower wheels. I don't have those pictured, uh, but they work a lot better. They're the foam kind. You'll want a couple of different types of drills. Again, washers, because we're only using really uh, thin half inch plywood. This is what the plywood looks like that I used, very thin. We use the Bondo to kind of give it a nice flat finish and to kind of seal it all in because it will be out in the elements a whole lot because this golf is played outside. Uh, I've not really played much inside yet. Uh, you'll want some different scraper tools. These ones are pretty old. Uh, that's to help get the Bondo. 800, 1200, these are really for your finish, uh, but we used 220. 60 and 120 grit sandpaper you can also get one of these mine is starting to wear thin so it's not holding on very well i need to buy the thing works i just need to buy a new pad there uh, maybe somebody has done that before i'll probably make a video on it just in case you ever have that happen uh, a couple of clamps are always helpful um, i use this tool that's actually for pipes uh, especially in cars you can get off the rubber pipes uh, to hold on the bolt when i did the bolt to the metal you also need a half inch rod i believe mine was like 18 inches i didn't really measure it i just cut it once it looked right uh, you can get a little hacksaw those work pretty well water and paper towels whatever kind of hinges again you could even use like door hinges i chose not to i had those and i bought one painter's tape is really helpful um, you're going to be having to cut a half inch and so if you have a a uh, four inch grinder that helps a lot lots of applications for that uh, i used a brad nailer that's optional um, you don't have to use a brad nailer i used a circular saw out of the picture is my miter saw and my table saw you don't have to use those you could probably get away with all of it with a circular saw you just get a little better lines you might want some brackets as well so those are really helpful 
Here are the tools and the supplies for the carpet part. I'm gonna be using this big T-square tape measure. This is just like one of the only mats I could find. Uh, and I kind of like it because it's got some rubber on the back. So I hope that helps adhere to the cart really well. Then we're gonna be using a heavy duty spray adhesive. Make sure to follow the directions on that. A Sharpie would probably be helpful and a really sharp utility knife. Putting a drink holder on here and a chalk bag and putting something on the front of it to lock it down, especially when you're driving and stuff, um, or just if you want it kind of locked and more secure. Um, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, so I got a couple of different things. Um, these are literally just, it's all probably packaged up. These are push pins that allow you to, uh, Packaging can be difficult sometimes. Oh, it's got a plastic tab here. I'm pretty certain I'm gonna have to break Nope, it just slides over and so these are kind of like push pins and uh, they have a couple of different sizes uh, then you kind of Put them together and so I might use those just so I have like a snap on it the other thing I bought was nylon webbing and so that's just like your basic buckle um, and so it comes with a lot of different things for that. And so I'll walk you through how I'm going to do each of these. There's probably a couple of different options. Um, I know for certain I'm going to use these for this. And one thing I didn't know until I just opened this up, if you really wanted to not buy this part, you can get away with just reusing this if you would like to and uh, put that on the front. So I'm probably just going to take this off and use it and put it up on here this thing does have two nice little pouches as well that's like perfect for keys um and if you want on the side there's one as well that will fit a phone so i really do like this i was gonna buy uh, my buddy has a prodigy one and uh, i liked it but i didn't want to spend the price on that this was much cheaper um, i already have a chalk bag as well so i'm just gonna throw my chalk bag right down inside and it has a beautiful little device that keeps the rain out if it does start to rain. So if you wanna put real chalk in there, like climber's chalk, you can do that. Or if you just wanna put your chalk bags, do whatever you want. Uh, but I do like this design, it's very sturdy. It's supposed to be water resistant as well. So we'll test that out and see. Uh, probably won't do a video on that, but we'll definitely test it out. I guess you could also put a Sharpie there if you wanted. Um, and hook that on if you you want to have a, a pin or something like that on there um, That's all the tools and the supplies that I used. Uh, there's probably other things you could have used uh, One other thing. I don't think I said these things are amazing. They're like three or four bucks But uh, it's made by rust-oleum. It just helps you get a better spray You put it right up to any of the cans that I used and you just spray with it We're gonna jump right on into the project now so to begin, I actually want to go back to a previous project I did. Uh, this was the disc golf cart. Um, I did put some new wheels on it, um, but besides that, it pretty much was a ball golf cart and uh, just some plywood. And I'm going to be making more of like a Zuka or Roller Ridge version of the cart. And one of the things I noticed over time, it begins to peel apart and crack. Um, because I used a couple of different types of wood on this, this was plywood, and this was supposed to be solid wood, but you can tell, uh, not very good. It's cracking everywhere. So I'm going to do some of the things I did on this, but also add some new versions to this. Uh, and this put my bag right in here and fits perfectly. You can get into some of the side pockets through the side. Um, but I probably will seal this part out um, and possibly the wheels, but I do have some ordered. I got more of a Zuka version versus a uh, like a lawnmower version of wheels. And so I'll probably put those on, uh, but maybe at the beginning, I probably won't because they still have a couple of more days to get in. So I might throw these on, but I'm going to build this portion to make it fit that. So here is my beginning specs. So it may be a little hard to see. I might have to kind of go over this, um, but I'm going to be building. I'm going to put a drawer in the front of it. It will be solid. The lid will open. That's what the little red dots are. And I went ahead and kind of measured out my desired sizes on all of this. Um, oh. So I went ahead and measured out all my desired sizes 
And if I turn it this way, you can see pretty much everything. You're gonna need a half inch metal rod, two uh, 12 inch wheels. Um, I probably will need another little piece of wood here. Probably gonna make that a solid piece of wood to kind of give me about five and a half inches right here. Same kind of concept as that. Um, and then I will also uh, use some sides, two 16 by 16s, and then two sides on this will be 16 by 12, 16 by 12. I will probably put a handle in, and then uh, the top will be 12 by 16 and 16 by 12 on the bottom with a little cut so that does lift up and doesn't hit the arm on the top. The other thing is I have a ridge line and I like it to go inside of my truck. Um, and so I have to make sure it's thin enough to get in there with the wheels on. And so that is the, some of those dimensions are based off of that as well. I'm gonna go through uh, exactly all the steps to make this cart happen. So I'm already kind of changing up one of my parts. Um, I'm going to do the first side that has that front. I'm actually going to make it 21 and a half uh, just because I'm going to cut out the other two chunks just so I can make it stand a little bit better and be more solid. So the first thing to do is go ahead and make it 16 inches. Uh, the other thing is you do want to make sure your height is right on the table saw. And so we're going to do 16 inches and rip it down the whole length of one of the boards I have. I don't have any whole sheets of plywood. I have lots of scrap pieces. So that's what we're going to do. Make sure it's locked down. So something I didn't realize is how warped this board was. So we are just going to have to cut this one with a circular saw. So because the other side is going to be 16 on one of them, we'll go ahead and measure just to double check. Perfect. So this will give us that 16 by 16. Please be very careful here. Then the other one's 16 by 21 and a half. So yes, these are two different sizes and that is the plan because remember we're gonna have the front side that is a bit longer. So that right there is exactly what we want there. Then we're going to need three 12 by 16s because the top is going to look a little different. So we'll go ahead and bring this in. And you're going to want this piece to be throwaway. Go ahead and repeat this two more times. So the next thing we're going to do is take two of those 12 by 16s and try to find ones that are pretty similar in size, which they all should be very similar. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of clamp those together. And then we'll get another clamp and clamp the other side. And we're gonna begin making the uh, handle for it. And so that way you can pick it up really nice and easily. And you can kind of make this handle as big or small as you want, but it is kind of nice if the handle is identical on both sides. So I'm just gonna grab tape measure here. Let's start it off three inches down. Since it's 12, we'll go from four to seven. And let's just go ahead and make it like an inch and a half. So it does not have to be super, super exact. It's just like to match it up a little bit. Oh, I don't think I had that right. Let's go to four inches, four inches to eight inches. I don't know what I was doing. That's more what I want. And I might make it a little more rounded than that. But uh, first thing I do is go ahead, make it nice and flat. And you can kind of do it on here if you would like. Go ahead and grab 
This is a 3 8 drill bit. And just put one up here in the corner. Straight through both of them. I'm going to go ahead and do this corner too, just in case I need to. A lot of times you can get away with just doing one of those though. And then we will go ahead and grab this jigsaw. You know what I'm going to do? This thing's moving a whole lot. And we're going to be kind of filling everything. I'm just going to put one screw down into it. Once I know I got it nice and lined up. We'll just pull this out later. So we're going to be smoothing that out later and sanding it all down nice and smooth but uh, that's at least a good first attempt that will give us the handles we need so when we are picking it up you'll have that option to just literally pick it up right by the side which is pretty sweet so in this next step we're going to go ahead and start putting the whole thing together um, you're going to want to make sure you have a drill with about a quarter inch drill bit whatever screws you're deciding to use um, i have one and a quarter inch and then i also have this light gauge not the best for wood but it does work okay um, but these ones are definitely smaller and will barely penetrate through and so i'll probably save these if i use any corner brackets which i probably will end up using just to uh, make it a little bit stronger but uh, these ones are definitely probably what I'll be using the most of, that inch and a quarter. And so let's just go ahead and start the build. We're not going to put the top on yet. That'll be the last thing we do. One of the tools I like to use this is actually for picture frames. And so we're going to work on the side and the back first. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this in. And again, this tool isn't perfect, but it does just kind of help make everything kind of hold together a little better. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description for this for you. It just kind of becomes an extra set of hands, so you have the option of doing a little bit better job gluing and screwing it in. I'm just going to hold that there just to make sure I'm all set on exactly how I want this built. So obviously the handles are upside down for how this is going to be going right now. Actually, I need to move it off of this center joist of this old door I have here just to get it nice and flat. And I'm trying to see if I want these on the inside or outside. I think I like it like that. Obviously, this is a really rough fit. Really rough. I think that looks good right there. Okay, I like it. So we're gonna come back to this piece and I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up just a little bit so we can make sure we put a good amount of wood glue down. This stuff is your friend. It will help bond these two together. So wood glue is your friend. Use it as much as you can because it will help make things stronger. Make sure you go with an outdoor indoor version.
So wood glue is definitely your friend. Make sure you have one that's an indoor and outdoor or exterior. And make sure you put quite a bit down. A lot of times I'll come back over. This is just a bamboo stick to just kind of even it out, get it spread around. Because this is really going to help lock you in well. You definitely don't want to skimp on it. See, that's what's nice about this is it just kind of holds it up. Uh, then we'll put another bead of that stuff down on the inside right here. We are still going to be using screws too because that just helps a lot. But wood glue is great stuff. And you'll notice sometimes it peel, pulls up off, off over the edge. That is okay. Because we still have to screw this thing together. So always use a pilot hole. And you don't have to go crazy tight. like that and then we'll come down to the bottom making sure it is oh not like that making sure it's good and lined up same concept because how thin this is you are going to make sure you use wood glue if you're using like half inch or an inch plywood, you can probably get away with not, but that's it go ahead and take your finger and I like to just kind of push it in we're gonna be putting a bunch of stuff on this to make it nice and smooth towards the end you can go ahead and do the same thing with the inside just kind of like caulk almost then we can go ahead and spin this out and we'll go ahead and do the next side Again, I really like this little tool. It just helps if you're especially doing this all by yourself. And I got it only for a couple of bucks. It's been a few years, so it might be more now, but when I bought it, it was super, super inexpensive. So same concept with this. I'm just going to go ahead and put the glue on it. And you can see this plywood was not the nicest piece. Uh, I don't really think that matters. I am just going disc golfing with it and eventually because it's not metal, it will go bad. It's just the way things are with wood. But uh, if you're looking for kind of an inexpensive alternative to one of the couple of hundred dollar carts, I think this could be a really good option for you. Especially if you have all the tools and stuff. If you're having to go out and buy all the tools, this is probably not worth it. Just saying. I mean, maybe if you just want to DIY it and you want it that way, but uh, if you don't have it, it's probably not your best bet. So same concept again. I'm just taking my time, putting this in there, kind of locking it down. I did this one on the top, which I think is probably what I should have done the first time, but uh, that's okay if you didn't.
I like to go down to the bottom next. Okay, so for this next one, because it's kind of bowing, I am gonna push down in the middle. Nope, I don't like that one. We can fill any of the holes. If you ever mess up on anything, that is the beauty of this is you can fill these holes later. And I don't like where this one landed, but it was a good holder for a while, so. Same concept, go ahead and wipe all that down. We're gonna sand all that, so don't worry. That will all get taken care of. So it's pretty lightweight already compared to really my last one that weighs probably twice as much as this one will weigh, and so. And so if you ever want to add any of these, you can always throw these in here and give yourself, I think I'm going to save them for the bottom though. I think I am going to put a couple of them kind of on the bottom just to give me that little bit of extra support because eventually I do probably want to sit on this. So I did cut the bottom wrong just a little bit. It should be 12 and 3 8 which will give you a nice snug finish there. So I did mess that up just a little bit. So you will want another 3 8 of an inch on that finish. And we'll go ahead and screw that down and into place.
I'm gonna switch up guns real quick. That battery's almost dead too. And this one just doesn't sink them as far, which is what I want. If you notice, I haven't gone all the way around. I'm just putting one in each at this point. Because there are times that this is going to have to kind of bend and stretch a little bit to make it work. So almost three of the six, four of the six sides are done. On this side, I put one, two, three, four. On that side, one, two, three, four, five. On this, and one, two, three. I probably should put a fourth one just to make it consistent.
just like that. And now that this is in here, so this will be the front, this will be the back side of it. Uh, so the wheel axle will go in here. And so I am going to put a couple of these in here just to give us some extra stability in here. And so I'm not probably gonna screw each and every one of them, uh, all the holes, cause there's a ton of them, but I do believe this will help give us just that little bit of extra support that we need. Um, you could also put this on the underside or outside, but it doesn't look as clean. And uh, these are the screws you're gonna wanna get. They are very lightweight, but uh, they will go into wood pretty well. And they are very small. They are 9 16 number nine screw. Sorry, number eight screw. Camera angle is gonna be weird on this, so I'm probably just gonna show you one and then uh, just fast forward through the rest. So these screws poke out just a little bit, so we, I do have to get a washer for them. So this is just a ASE 10 washer, and this should give us just enough to not have to uh, sand off the end of all of these, which means it's not gonna go through the wood well and not hold well, so. Hopefully the washer trick works. And it did, because it's not poking out the side like it was. So I think I'm just gonna put four screws on each of these, and that, again, is just some extra support just to really help out and uh, make sure you're not gonna do anything where it's gonna fall apart as easy. Probably not totally necessary. And these are probably more heavy duty than what they need to be, but they were in my garage, which means I don't have to pay for them. So there's that. And I will probably put one on the front underneath uh, just to give us some extra strength. So it would go down on the front side under here. Well, actually, more like that. Not that there wasn't enough there already, but that gives you an even more secure fit. So I'm gonna figure out what kind of drawers I want to make for this next. So this is 26 disc right here, and the Wombat is one of my biggest ones that I have. And so I do have to figure out where I'm going to actually put for um, the shelf in the middle. And so I do want a little bit of gap so they can be in there and flush and so i kind of like where that's at so i'm going to go ahead and take my sharpie marker i'm going to probably move it down just a little bit and just put a dot there again we're going to be painting over all this later but yeah that's 25 disc and a lot of those are actually putters if you look at it or mid ranges and so that's pretty good and so nine and a quarter inches down is uh, where we're gonna put that shelf. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure it nine and a quarter so that will be the top of it. And so it's gonna kind of be hard to see, but I did put some lines in there. So we're gonna take this piece that we kind of messed up on and actually use it as the shelf because if it's perfect this way, uh, it just needs some help on the length of it. And so we'll go ahead and get a good measurement for that length by putting it right inside, right where that is. And we're looking at pretty much 15 inches on the dot. We'll go over and tear the table saw and cut that.
And you might be wondering why I'm not using the beautiful ruler on here. It's not perfect. Always use a tape measure. So once you think you got it about where it needs to be, this is really where we're going to measure to make sure we are as accurate as possible. So this is going to be very snug getting this in here, which is okay. It is going to make gluing it a bit more difficult. And there is a little bit of a bow, and I actually want the bow to go this way just to make sure the disc can fit in there well. So we don't need a ton of screws on this, but I am gonna put some in. In fact, I'm gonna put some glue on it too. Gonna go ahead and bump it back out and just put a little line of glue. Gonna go ahead and line it back up. Remember we want it on the bottom side. And so then it looks like it has a proper space for all of the goodies in there. Gonna try just to do one screw in the back, but we're not certain if that's, I'm not certain if that's gonna actually work. So we'll just choose there. So that right there is pretty good now. So I am going to take and get some of that glue up. And so that should give us pretty good dependability right there. Again, if you wanted to put another bracket in there, you could, but I'm not going to. So the next piece is this one. We are not gonna put this on yet. We're just dry fitting it right now. But you can see it will have this overhang here, which is exactly what we want. That'll give us just enough when you have the wheels here for it to sit comfortably. I am just going to put a little mark on it as well. So I have this piece of 1x4 here that we are going to use. Um, I think it's going to help us out getting just that little bit of extra thickness we need for the legs here. So we are going to use a pressure treated piece as well with this just to kind of help us out a little bit. So we'll go ahead and measure that line. And so it's about 5 and an eighth. So we're gonna go five and an eighth as well. And then 10 and a quarter. And that will give us the two extra pieces for the legs to make it a little thicker so you're not just relying on that plywood. And we'll go ahead and cut that. So I'm using the miter saw for this cut. So those two little pieces will help us out a whole lot, making sure that's nice and secure on the ground. So the goal will be, this will be like the inside part and then these will be sitting on top of it, just like that. And so we will screw these down in here and then also glue them nice. So we'll go ahead and just start gluing them first. So when that gets done, that will sit like that and just give us a really nice thick base. So I should have done this before I uh, did that last part, but I think we're gonna be fine. I'll just go ahead, 
make a mark here. Put this piece here and go ahead and make a mark right there. And we are gonna want to take this piece out. I am gonna unscrew that real quick, but we are gonna put it right back in the same spot. We're gonna get the jigsaw back out and use it to cut that piece. So, because of how this drawer thing is, um, and I do want to make it pretty awesome and either have a flip down or a pull out, I'm not even certain which one I'm gonna do yet. I do need to cut this part, um, and I need to do it in a way that I can actually reuse it or cut something very similar to put back in. And so, I am going to want to measure it properly, and so we will do that now. And because I have the hardware in here, I do wanna make sure I remember to leave room for that. And so I probably will leave like, I'm gonna say probably half an inch, I'm guessing, on all the sides. And so we will come in probably half an inch plus that. So I'm gonna say one inch. And then we'll come in one inch from this side. And then one inch from this side. And then I'm gonna kinda just put it on there and kinda guesstimate here. So that's seven and an eighth is where that center hits. So one inch down from seven and eighths would be six and an eighth. And then same thing here, I'm just gonna go ahead. So the next thing I'll cut out is for that drawer. So once you've gone ahead and clamped yourself down, I'm just gonna do a couple of pilot holes on here. So that is cut out just how I'd like it. And we're gonna go ahead and put on the underneath part again. I know I've already done it once, kind of messed that up and did it too early. But it's okay. Things do happen. Again, you see why I want that thicker, just so when you're when you're putting it, putting it to a stop, it actually does stop. And I already put the glue on this one a while ago, so it's still it's still good. So the edge that's most important to me is this outside edge. I am probably going to use a clamp. Actually, I wasn't going to. But we want to make sure this outline of this edge is good. We can always uh, skim off some of the inside as needed.
And then that right there will line up just perfect all the way around. See how that looks? That that will allow us to have the compartment we need, plus the drawer here, so you can put all the junk you want to in that drawer. So we got a whole lot more gluing to do. So I'm gonna use this in one of the corners just to give myself a little bit more ability to get it where it needs to go at the beginning. Especially since I am doing this solo. If you had another partner person helping, you probably wouldn't need this. They could just hold the other side. But it does help when you're just lining everything up to help get it extra extra good so I'm going to start in this corner I'm going to move down here I don't like where that one landed You can go ahead and get all the glue out. <laughs> Same thing on the inside. So that right there is the basic construction. We still have to work on whatever kind of drawer we're gonna put in here. And so that'll be kind of the next thing I work on. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on the top seat part and do the drawer just a little bit later. And so it is normally 16 inches. I want it a little bit bigger. I shouldn't have cut that piece yet. I want that 17 inches. And I do want that little bit of a overhang. So I'm gonna do 13. So 13 by 17. And uh, that should fit perfect. And then I'll have to cut a little piece back here as well. So let's go ahead and cut the 13 inches first. Then we'll go ahead and measure for the 17 inches. I believe this is 18 inches long, so it's just gonna be a little bit of a trim. So this is just dry fitting it, making sure it does what we want it to. That's looking good right there. Has the ability for you to kind of grasp it and get on it, but also has enough as you're sitting on it, it will do what it needs to do. And so I'm just kind of setting it up to kind of show you what that will look like. We are going to have to get a piece and uh, screw it in on the back as well, just to make it unified. And so we can go ahead and do that now. That'll just be a piece that is 17 inches as well. So even though this says it's half inch, it's not even going to be close to half an inch. It's going to be more like three eighths of an inch. So that's how far we'll cut it is three eighths of an inch. It's kind of silly looking, but you are going to want it there. And I'm just going to use a jigsaw to cut it because it is so small. And I'm probably going to get some brad nails for this. So these are just 18 gauge brad nails. I'm probably gonna put some more brad nails across pretty much the whole thing just to help get it uh, even more secure. These things are pretty inexpensive, and especially when you have a, a gun. So that right there just really helped make it much stronger and uh, I mean you really probably don't even need all the screws but the goal is that that thing's not coming apart and you have the ability for this thing to last as long as it possibly can. It won't last forever. It's built out of wood. 
And so the next thing I'm gonna do is try to figure out what I want to do with this, if I'm going to make it kind of a pocket door or something that just kind of folds down or might just leave it open as well. And uh, you have the ability, it's got a little bit of a lip, it might be hard to see, but that uh, should, still should hold pretty well. And we got a lot of sanding to do and a lot of work to make it look finished. But uh, overall, I'm liking the beginning of how it's looking and how it's working. So we're gonna go ahead and put um, two corner brackets and this will just help give us that extra bit of strength, um, especially when we're going up and down things and just wanna make sure everything is where it needs to go. Because the terrain on disc golf is sometimes unknown or uh, not the best. So this will just help give you that extra bit of support, especially if you're planning on sitting on this at all. I'm a big guy, about 250 pounds. So I don't want to uh, have it break on me when I'm sitting on it. So that's the other reason I do this. And it just helps kind of secure everything together a little bit better. And I am putting this kind of in the center of both of those, which I think will work really well. So right there, you'll still have your cubby. We're gonna go ahead and measure for that. So I figured out what hinges I'm going to use. I'm gonna be using these quarter inch semi wrap overhang hinge. And uh, I'm not gonna do it till we're all the way painted, but it'll pretty much sit like this. I will have to create a bigger one of these. And so I will make it just a little bit bigger than the actual size. And then it will actually kind of like stay locked. You could also do it on the side if you wanted to do it that way. And uh, it would be kind of hard to open, but I do like the, the flop down. Um, you could put an actual drawer in here if you want, but I think I like this concept uh, pretty well. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to pretty much just make it a little bit bigger, and I'll probably round the edges pretty well. So this cutout is 5 and a quarter by 14, so we'll do 14 and a half. By probably five and a half. So there's 14 and a half. And there's five and a half. That'll just help give me a reference point when we go to the table saw. That'll give me five and a half. We will not put this on yet, but that right there will cover everything, but also give us that ability for that hinge to work right there. So there is one other piece I did forget to do as well. We need something to go down in here and uh, kind of keep the disc. So I'm just going to use this and uh, just pretty much cut it right here. This is a, a leftover piece and then I'll trim it to fit in there. It doesn't have to be full size and you can kind of just make it what it is. It's Mine's gonna be about three inches. So again, this is just gonna be going in here and you can kind of choose the, the width that you want it and the height that you want it. I'm gonna leave mine relatively low. I'm just going to use the jigsaw to cut it. Then we'll just kind of go ahead and test it. Make sure it fits in there. We'll go ahead and start sanding everything down, cleaning up the workstation a little too. Okay, we're gonna sand everything down. I have the uh, 
I have 60 on there right now, then we'll go to 120, uh, then 220 grit sandpaper in that order so everything's nice and smooth. And I'll probably fast forward this, but just every bit of it needs sanded really well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make sure all these are actually sunk all the way down in. So I might have to screw some of those out and screw them back in. I'm not gonna show you that, you just do it. You just redo it, sink them back down in a little further. So we're gonna be using some fast dry filler. And so this stuff uh, is I really meant for cars, but it will help fill all the gaps and just kind of give us a nice little surface. You will wanna make sure you have the hardener that comes with it and read the instruction manual properly. And so, We'll go ahead and open her up. You'll probably want a couple of different kinds of putty knives, um, but it says about a three inch glob. So I'm going to go ahead and make it six inches, which will be about half the can. I probably won't be able to do all of this at once, but we're gonna try our best to do a good chunk of it. And I'm just using a, uh, this is from an Oracle 5160 and it's the, the shiny side. So yeah, I'm gonna be using about half the can. And then we'll go ahead and put the top back on cause you don't want this to be exposed too long to the elements. And then when you're reading the directions, you'll see that you need to have about a two and a half to three inch strip of hardener. And so since we kind of doubled the recipe, that should be good right there. And we'll save the rest for later. And then you're going to go ahead and mix that together. And we're just wanting a thin coat everywhere. And then we will sand it down. So we'll go ahead mix all this fun stuff together and we will be painting this so it doesn't matter what color this looks like even though it looks gross right now and it also says do not use cardboard that's why i'm using the kind of paper that i am because it strictly says do not use cardboard. I'm guessing the cardboard will probably deteriorate with whatever is going on. So you're looking for one consistent color. I'm just gonna be doing a really light thin coating. I'm gonna move up to about a three inch. And the goal of this is, is just to kind of fill all the gaps, all the cracks, all the holes. And we'll be doing a lot of sanding afterwards too. It'll just give it a nice smooth finish. And if you've worked with this at all, you know, some people like the smell of it. I think it smells terrible, but uh, there is the smell involved as well. So don't forget about that when you're doing this. You can always wear a mask if you don't like the smell, but I like talking to you, so I'll uh, avoid that. But make sure you got at least some fresh air. Go ahead and go outside if you can. And this will also kind of help give you a little bit better uh, finish with being out in the elements as well. I 
So mix it together really quickly and you're just going to keep doing this as many times as you need to. Don't do a bunch. The set time is three to five minutes. And so that's good. Then we'll go ahead and just start applying it. So I ran out of the first, so we're just going to continue. This one is not the fast dry, but it does pretty much the same thing. So after you've waited the recommended time, we're going to start with 220, which is what we finished with. We're also going to use a 800, uh, then a uh, 1200. And so I'm only going to do the spots that I know are completely dry. Like I'm not going to do the, the fronts yet, but I'm just going to go ahead and start hitting this up. And uh, it will take some of this off, which is great. Uh, we do want a nice smooth finish at the end. So I have a couple of spots I'm going to go ahead and continue to finish off up here. Sometimes it takes you sanding it to realize if you have any areas that still need a little bit more work. So go ahead and take your time, sand it down, and then come back to that area. And so I really want to get this front a little bit better. And this stuff does make a huge mess, so I encourage you to be outside in a well-ventilated area, wear a mask if you need to. Safety glasses, I wear glasses, so these are pretty good. 
And there's not a whole lot of this left, so I'm probably gonna even steal the stuff on the lid. So we're going to be using automotive paint and this is just a primer and sealer in one um, and it works pretty well so that's what we're going to use for the base coat and uh, then we will put more of a nicer finish paint on top of it make sure you shake it up for the proper amount of time spray evenly and do not let it run uh, then let it dry all the way read the back of the can uh, then go ahead and flip it over once it's totally dry and spray the other side And then go ahead and do the same thing for the big one as well. So that is sat for about 40 minutes out in the sun. We're gonna go ahead and flip them all over and paint the other side. So I think my camera did mess up. Um, we're gonna be using uh, Intensive Blue Pearl and it is a dupli dupli color perfect match. It's for vehicles, uh, but it works really well. It's a good thick paint. Um, and it does allow you to uh, make it really nice. I did want to go ahead and spray the first coat of it uh, I thought I had it recorded and I don't think it actually got there um, And so um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the second coat on that and we'll go ahead and flip these ones just over It's only 10 minutes between on this kind of paint works really 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 well And then go ahead and let that thing sit. So I've just temporarily put these in because we do have to cut this back down. And so I am going to go ahead and mark that. And so it's gonna be a little wider than that or a little narrower than that, but that'll give me a good idea. And in fact, I probably will just go ahead and take them back out. Because we're only going down a little bit, I'm just going to use this little hand saw here. And I'll use a chisel for the rest of it. And then we'll go ahead and hit that back up with some spray and let that sit. So we're going to be using these cabinet hinges for the front and I think we'll go ahead and actually just start on 
putting these things on here and here. We'll find out how long it is. It's about 14 and a half. So seven inches would give us center. We're gonna do it at the 10 inch mark and the four inch mark. And we're gonna use the screws it came with, but we are gonna to have to add some washers to it just because of how long they are. But you don't wanna put the washers underneath, you wanna put them on top like this. So that right there looks really good. And those hinges will work really well. I mean, I'm gonna put it like this, just so I can see what I'm doing for the next few moments. Get it nice and lined up. And you could also put a handle on the front of that, but for right now, I'm not going to. I do like how that looks. We'll go ahead and work on getting these back ones done now. So these are the hinges that I kind of had to redo a little bit, um, but that is okay. This now makes sure it sits in there properly and it should allow this thing to sit nice and flat once it is done. Just like that. So let's go ahead and put these uh, beautiful things on. So they go like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift them up there. We will need to put a washer on them. And these are Phillips as well. We're gonna be using the screws that it did come with. Then we'll do the same thing for this side. Perfect. And then this is where we're gonna wanna make sure we get this really nice and straight, exactly how we want that thing to sit. And then I am gonna draw some lines inside of it. Gonna go ahead and take them, put washers on it. You need four of them.
So you might have some adjusting that you have to do to get this thing to sit flat and that's okay. You just gotta figure out which one can go where. And when we put that back down, that will sit nice and level. We still have to work on the wheels and uh, that's really about it. The rest of it works really well. I also am gonna add the, uh, this one came with them as well if I can find them, these little beautiful pieces that should help dampen the sound a little bit. So I'm gonna put it in these two corners and hopefully that will dampen the sound once you get done finding what disc you want. Your friends don't get mad at you because they hear your cart slam. But oh well, hopefully you're still in your time frame for your shot and they can just get over it if they're really that mad. Most people are pretty chill. But yeah, you should be able to store quite a bit of stuff in that compartment, which would be really, really nice. And so that does stop it a little bit. I might touch up spray right here just a little as well. But uh, I think that overall that's much lighter than my last cart was too. And so again, we still have the handle to put on. And over time, this thing will get back down to the correct size. It's a little wobbly now, but when you sit on that a few times, it'll be perfect. So to be able to do this last part, we want to be able to have this thing fold down properly when we need it to store. But we also want to make sure we are not going through anything we shouldn't be. So I'm going to scoot it up a little bit. We want this to be pretty much dead centered. Um, uh, then we're going to go ahead and start to make our holes. This is the smaller one. We'll end up using this one right here, and we probably will have to cut the end of this off, but that's okay. <laughs> And that sounded really hard because it's going through that metal plate as well, which is actually a really good thing for this. It will really make sure it stays on there well. So we are gonna have to open up that trap door to be able to put this one in. So this one's gonna be a little hard to show you, but I think it'll work. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in the locked position just so I can hopefully get this in and through easily. I'm gonna put a washer on and this is a 10 millimeter. And I'm not gonna tighten it down too much yet. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure we look good for where this one is. And then we do need to bump it up a little bit bigger cause we got a bigger drill bit going in there. You can watch my other video to see exactly what size all this is, but it's, it's really just gonna matter what size you are doing. So that one went through really easily. actually going to make that just a little bit wider it's harder to get that through that should be plenty And the inside is the one that has the 10 millimeter. You know what, I think I'm gonna do that the other way. Yeah. 
You may be wondering why my hands are kind of black. This had some thread lock on it, and it still is on there. So I don't think I'm gonna add any more. Yeah, I like that better. I'll we'll have to go inside the pair of adjustable wrenches just to help hold that down. Nope. I'll have to hold the outside down. And I love how this thing stays open until you need it to shut. That is awesome. Go ahead and go ahead and get the bottom one. I am probably going to need a longer 12 millimeter. And I just switched it up to a ratcheting wrench. Hold this side in. Not really certain if that's actually 12 millimeter. It's pretty close, but it is slipping a little bit. That's good right there. I am gonna cut that off just so I don't have it. I don't think it's really gonna do too much. Oh, but it will kind of block that. So let's go ahead and just cut that off. And that'll just smooth that out too. I really like how that looks now. I think that looks really, really good. Really solid on there as well. And it will allow me to do kind of whatever I want, which is pretty sweet. So there's two ways to do this next part. I'm gonna try to weld this to it. This came with my original ones and it will fit. It's a half inch. And I'm gonna try to weld it onto the end here. If this does not work, you can always go with uh, what I did on the first project of this, which is where I just put cotter pins on this and it did work pretty good so make sure you got all your safety equipment on if you are going to weld find somebody that knows how to do it if you don't Now, I never said I was a good welder or anything, but that will definitely work. That has got tons of strength to it. Now we have to measure how far the cabinet is and how much room we want on both sides. And then we will cut this, put it through, and then weld the other side on. You will need to cut a half inch hole on both sides in equal spots. I did not show that. I don't know what happened to that video. So once you've got that all the way through, we're going to go ahead and cut it as clean as we can. Then we'll center this back up a little bit better. And then go ahead and touch it up with some spray. Here are the tools and the supplies for the carpet part. I'm gonna be using this big T-square tape measure. This is just like one of the only mats I could find. Uh, and I kind of like it because it's got some rubber on the back. So I hope that helps adhere to the cart really well. Then we're gonna be using a heavy duty spray adhesive. Make sure to follow the directions on that. A Sharpie would probably be helpful and a really sharp utility knife. So one of the first steps to do is just to begin to measure the inside of it and uh, then we'll make some cuts on that. And so we'll have this at 14 and seven eighths. And I wanna come right up to the top and that's nine and a quarter. So it's 14 and seven eighths and nine and a quarter for mine. 
and they do sell this in a couple of different lengths so make sure it's a length that is good for you i believe this will have more than enough for what i need it for as long as i don't mess up too many times so it was and i just double check again 14 and 7 eighths And nine and a quarter. So that right there will get me what I need. And then we'll just take the knife. It may take a couple of cuts because this is supposed to be oil resistant. That's what they make this carpet for. And so especially if your knife is not brand new That right there will get us this front piece right here. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to spray both and let it sit for about a minute. So we're gonna go ahead and spray the inside. And you're gonna let that sit for about one minute. Uh, then we will go ahead and apply it. I am going to put on some gloves because this stuff does get sticky. So it's been about a minute now. And I know this seems odd, but this stuff will really help uh, kind of keep your disc from getting damaged as well. So we'll go ahead and measure the next one, and then I will just cut this piece out when it's on there. and so just like that that is done it doesn't go all the way back but it goes almost to that bar so that's all i want so i went ahead and put these little dots on which did not really work very well 
And so I found this just laying in my garage. It's about, uh, I don't know, eighth inch thick, and it's just about the same size. And so I've decided I'm just gonna go ahead and put this down. I'm gonna rip off this other little dot because it still rattles. Um, I put the old wheels from my previous, you can see it on the other side, cart that I made uh, on this just temporarily because I have a match tomorrow that I need to play in and I wanted to test this out before I do kind of the final uh, shot on it because I want to make sure it does what I want it to do. And so we can go ahead and just get kind of a rough idea get some scissors and cut it and then the white peels off I've used this for some other applications and it worked really well so I'm hoping the same thing is true for this so I'm gonna start I start in this corner and kind of work my way to the back And again, it's thin, but it should. That already has softened it quite a bit, which is fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and do this side next. That looks real good right there. And that just became so much quieter. I'm super impressed with how that is. There might be something I get to kind of lock this over. I haven't decided yet, especially like when I'm in my vehicle. Um, if I put it in the back, I don't want like all my discs to fly out. So that is one thing I have to think through of what I'm going to do for that. And you know what, I'm gonna reuse this little piece and I'm just gonna come down here I'm gonna put one right here and one right here. And that kind of helped dampen that sound a little too. So that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and test this thing in a match I have tomorrow and then uh, finalize some different things on it and uh, put all the video together for you. Okay, we got our next step of the project. I did take it out and played around with it just to make sure I liked where it's currently at. Uh, I was an idiot when I bought the wheels. I thought it was a two pack of wheels and it was only a one pack of wheels. So I had to put my old uh, version one of the cart and I'll put a card right up here that uh, you can uh, see what the original one looked like. That's where I got this from as well. Anyways, got the wheels um just to give it a test around while i was waiting for the rest of the stuff to get in so we're going to be working on putting a drink holder on here and a chalk bag and putting something on the front of it to lock it down especially when you're driving and stuff um, or just if you want it kind of locked and more secure um, i haven't decided what i'm going to do yet so i got a couple of different things um, these are literally just, it's all probably packaged up. These are push pins that allow you to, uh, packaging can be difficult sometimes. Oh, it's got a plastic tab here, I'm pretty certain. I'm gonna have to break. Nope, it just slides over. And so these are kind of like push pins and uh, they have a couple of different sizes and then you kind of put them together and so I might use those just so I have like a snap on it the other thing I bought was nylon webbing and so that's just like your basic buckle um, and so it comes with a lot of different things for that and so I'll walk you through how I'm going to do each of these there's probably a couple of different options um, I know for certain I'm going to use these for this and one thing I didn't know until I just opened this up if you really wanted to not buy this part, you can get away with just reusing this if you would like to and uh, put that on the front. So I'm probably just gonna take this off and use it and put it up on here. This thing does have two nice little pouches as well. That's like perfect for keys. Um, and if you want, on the side there's one as well that will fit a phone. So I really do like this. I was gonna buy, uh, my buddy has a Prodigy one and uh, I liked it, 
but I didn't want to spend the price on that. This was much cheaper. Um, I already have a chalk bag as well, so I'm just going to throw my chalk bag right down inside, and it has a beautiful little device that keeps the rain out if it does start to rain. So if you want to put real chalk in there, like climber's chalk, you can do that. Or if you just want to put your chalk bags, do whatever you want. Uh, but I do like this design. It's very sturdy. It's supposed to be water resistant as well. So we'll test that out and see. Uh, probably won't do a video on that, but we'll definitely test it out. I guess you could also put a Sharpie there if you wanted um, and hook that on if you, you want to have a, a pin or something like that on there. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. Um, let's go ahead and we'll just do this since we have it open. So the first thing we're gonna do, go ahead and take off the little buckle here. And go ahead and feed it through. Both of these. I mean, if you wanna figure a way out to do it and use this system, you can, but uh, I'm just gonna pull both of these off and if I ever want to reuse it someplace else I can uh, it'll have a little buckle piece on it but that's okay sorry it's kind of being a pain because I got it twisted this is definitely a good fit for this one very very small so yeah I'm sure if you're hiking or whatever, mountain climbing, you'll probably want that. But I'm just gonna use that. I'm gonna scoot some of the other stuff out of the way so we have pretty good access to this. So this is how button snaps work. This will be like the actual button. Um, and it will go like this. It looks a little weird, but what will happen is the fabric will be between these two pieces after you cut the hole out. And if you have basic fabric, you can use this punch, but we're not gonna be using that uh, today because we're gonna have to use a drill bit. We're gonna use a 3 16 uh, Then you will knock this down and it will help secure it. So I'm gonna set that there for a second. You have to figure out what way you want this to sit, which is this way. So we need to put the button through, and I don't wanna go through both pieces. I just wanna go through one. And I want to do it kind of like right here. And be careful of going too quick like I just did. Probably should have put it down. This is an old table, so I don't care if I kind of go through it. So you're going to take a 3 16 drill and kind of figure out where you want it and go slow because you can go too quick. Uh, then we'll go ahead and get our pieces. And remembering we want the button in through the hole. So we're gonna find that hole. And then we're gonna put the button piece on it. And hopefully this can sit in there. It's not gonna be as pretty. And then this will be at a little bit of an angle, but it should work. I might have to do this on the ground just so I don't pop everything, but it looks like it's kind of working. Some good healthy hits on there. We'll kind of push that flange piece down. I'm going to do one on this side. Well, no, I'm not because I don't want to ruin the tip. I think that's more than good. Really, you probably could get away with one piece, but we're going to go ahead and do both sides. Again, try to find the same, about the same area. And just go real slow. And sometimes this one, it's like the heavy duty one. It does not always work the best. Probably helps if I'm not in hammer mode as well. I 
I probably should have got a smaller drill bit first and kind of worked it in, but we're almost there. And there we go. And then we'll go ahead and grab two more, making sure the button is going the correct way. And with this here, we can still reuse this however we wanted to previously, which is kind of nice. If you want to use it for rock climbing, you still have that ability. You do make sure the button is facing the right way. A couple of really good hits. I am going to turn it over and hit it. Just. I'm not on a real super flat surface there. So I do want to just make sure that stays for the long haul. haul. Perfect. Now you just have to figure out where you want your two little screws to go. And so you have to choose what side of, what side you want it on. And because I'm a right-handed player, I think I'm going to put it on the right side. You don't have to if you're a right-handed player. I just feel like that makes the most sense to me. And I want it pretty, pretty level. So I'm going to scoot it down just a little bit. And put two beautiful holes in there. And then again, we'll find the small one. I don't want the big, huge ones, so there are two different sizes, so we don't go all the way through. These are nice, they're just little Phillips, and you just screw it right in there. Just like so. And those are nice and secure, you go ahead and put your chalk bag on there. And I guess if you wanted to, you could put one at the bottom, but I kind of like that it just kind of hangs. Uh, then you don't have to have your bag there. You can just toss it right in. And if you want to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, you can do that right there. And then you can get rid of your stupid plastic bag you had for over a year, MC Fix It. And even if you want to put multiple types of chalk bags, this one is actually for bowling. Works pretty well. I got it from a buddy who bowls a lot. And so you can have both of them in there if you want. And that'll, that'll move around, but it's not gonna make a whole lot of noise. So next thing we'll do is we'll jump on over to putting on a cup holder. So if you're anything like me, you drink a whole lot of water when you're playing disc golf. And I looked everywhere for different cup holders. And this one was one that had the best reviews for holding something like a Nalgene water bottle. And so, I'll get it out of the beautiful plastic. And so this one expands just by twisting it, which is pretty sweet actually. And so it definitely, I mean, it's bigger than an Algene bottle, but once you get it where you want it, you kind of bring it back down and it allows you to still be able to remove it pretty easily. So overall, I really like this concept and it still sits pretty flush against everything. And so it's kind of out of your way as well. And so let's go ahead and install it. First thing you're gonna do is go ahead and cut off these zip ties, however you want. Don't cut yourself. It's one of the most important parts of that. Uh, then you decide where you want to put this. I am going to be using these number eight screws, nine sixteenths. Um, two of them is all I will need. And they're both Phillips. Uh, then we can just kind of decide where we want this to sit probably going to come off to this side to make sure i get kind of lined up where i want it to go which i kind of want to match the height of that but i am going to put the water bottle back in to kind of see where it lives because i obviously don't want it too high but also not too low as well so let's just go there and i'm just going to mark the top hole And then get it's just a Phillips screw. And these are too big. I'm glad I checked that out real quick before I screwed it all together. 
I believe in here I have some from, uh, I think I tossed them in here from one of the other screws. I can't find them now. There's one. There's the second one. So I ended up saving these from one of the hinge pieces. Um, and so I'm actually probably just gonna use that because the head is a little smaller. I was hoping to be able to use what I already had purchased, but I already own these two, so hopefully don't lose them. You definitely could do pre-drills, but uh, I'm just gonna go for it. And I didn't tighten it all the way down just so I have the ability to kind of move it how I want this one to go. And then we'll tighten it down the rest of the way. These ones are not cheap, uh, but I really do like the functionality of it and its ability to hold my water bottle. Uh, then you just loosen it up. Two screws is all that it is. Um, so I really do like this version. Um, I hope you figure out which one you like, but uh, I like that that's actually secure. It's not gonna mean I'm gonna have to like open up the lid every time I want something. And uh, so that's what we're gonna go with. So here's that last part we're gonna do. And I think I've changed my mind. I was just gonna use what came on the chalk bag, but I think I'm gonna use this. I want this one inch piece. I'm probably not gonna use the buckles it comes with but I think I'm just going to screw it in the top and then put a button here. That way when I unbutton it, it allows me to be able to lift it and it kind of gives me something to hold onto as well. So let's go ahead and kind of guesstimate where I want that. I'm gonna to wanna to put it center and about there. So I'm gonna cut just a little bit past that. Trying to cut in a nice straight line. I'm going to take my little butane and go ahead and hit up the end, which kind of melts it all together. You don't want to forget this step. And I like to do it right now just to make sure it is done properly. And so take a few seconds to dry, but uh, this stuff does melt pretty awesome and it makes it so it does not come back apart. And so the next thing to do is figure out where you want this to sit. And right now I think I'm just gonna try to hold it in with one screw and I don't wanna hit here, I wanna go past that. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and kind of line it up. And there's a good chance I'm going to have to cut off the bottom part because it's probably going to stick through a little bit. So I did bring my my grinder out for that. So. It's gonna hate me for a few seconds because it's gonna try to twist. But that right there gives you a nice solid piece. I am going to take that back out though but first I'm going to figure out where that hole needs to be. And so this will sit just about right there. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. which might seem weird, but I am just gonna push this right back in up, up to it. And we have that hole already done for us. We need to go ahead and work on getting the button on this. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get it with this tool. Um, I'm not certain how well it's gonna work. I probably will have to either cut it um, or drill it. We'll see though. Yeah, this is just too thick. 
So I think I kind of gave a nice little impression. I think I'm going to try to cut it. Because I know it's going to be hard to actually drill this. So I'm going to see if I can just cut it a little bit. I don't think that works. I am going to have to to drill it. And again, it's that 3 16 size. This is an old table below, so don't worry. Well, it's not even a table, it's a door, if I was honest. Nasty old door. And so, you're going to put the button on the same side. I'm going to have to clean it up a little bit. See, this is so woven together that sometimes it is hard to get a nice clean cut through it. So I'm not sure if you saw what I just did there. I put the scissors through and then I came back uh, with the other side of it. So that is definitely something you can do. So same concept here. So nice and smashed on there. That will allow us to be able to put that perfectly back where it's supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and shut that and then bring you back up here. I know. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in. So just like so, and then we'll get our button and I'm going to kind of fake put it on there if that makes sense. Just go ahead and put that in. And then this will allow us to snap that in and that will make sure nothing comes out, but when you need it, you just unsnap it. And so a little easier to sit on too. You're not really gonna feel any of that. And it gives you a nice little lever as you're putting it down. You can put it down soft so you won't smash your fingers. And so as soon as I get the wheels in, I'll, uh, Go ahead and finish this video up. Be a couple more days. So if you do this project, buy two wheels from this company that'll be in the description. You'll wanna make sure you do that. So one thing I mentioned is you're gonna have this little screw sticking through a little bit. That's potentially where your hands are gonna go. So I'm just gonna take my grinder. It is nice and smooth and you're not going to ding up your hands on that. So that is definitely something you will want to do unless you're using a thicker top. So there's one additional thing I want to add and it is a, uh, it's a handle that will go right here and allow you to be able to pull it down. Um, I did have to find other screws. The screws that came with were just way too long because it's for a cabinet. Um, and so I do like that it has the two screws as well instead of just one screw um, and so i'll show you how to go ahead and do this make sure you get your tape measure out and because this is about 14 and a half inches it'll be seven and a half will be kind of our our center mark and then you have to choose where you want got two different spots for it it's got a three inch which is I think the one we're gonna go with and you also have to kind of decide how far down you want your handle so just think of this on the opposite side I do want a little bit um, of room and so now that you have the center marked 
you go ahead and put that on. So you're doing the three inches, so it'll be one inch and one inch. So now that you have the center mark, you're gonna go ahead and put that on an inch and a half. Just like that, and then you're gonna go ahead and draw your circles at the one and three. And so those are where the two will be. And then you can go ahead and kind of just guesstimate where this will be. Obviously it'll be on the outside. And then we're just gonna take an eighth inch drill bit. And go ahead and go all the way down and through. Just like so. It should have just poked through the other side, which is what we want. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin to put this in. Needs to be just a little wider. I should have actually used a 532nd drill bit. That would have given me enough room. But just like that. You can go ahead and put your screws down in. Make sure you get your handle the right direction. This is going to be kind of hard to... And those are not long enough. So I am going to have to kind of bore this out just a little bit. Do you want to be cautious of not going too far? So go ahead and unscrew both of them. push it through and you can see some of it is sticking out which is what we want it to do and we did choose the wider pattern so you're not cranking it down yet you're just getting it on there and then we'll start tightening it down side down and that right there becomes a nice little easy handle and because those are kind of I don't know what they're called technically they just spring back um, they work really well and I think that looks really good I'm gonna tighten it down just a touch more you could also put some Loctite on this so it doesn't come off but uh, I don't think that's going to come off. And uh, you're pretty much done there. That turned out really good. And uh, is kind of a black color, which will match the wheels. So this was a one half inch, 13 by four inch. And then we're going to use a couple of flat washers, half inch grade eight yellow zinc, and then half inch uh, coarse nuts to go over top of them and we'll probably cut off the end that we don't need um, this end is cool enough to go ahead and start after we welded because that's the one we welded first 
And so you can choose which side is inside, which side is outside. There is the little thing in the middle, which I don't necessarily like. Um, but what I found is if you got a Sharpie, which we've used already, this inside can actually get straightened out by the Sharpie. So when you put it in there, it does help a little bit. Kind of becomes a little bit of a guide. And there we go. And one thing I wanted to do first that I didn't do is go ahead and put a big thick washer on there that will just help so no dirt and debris and everything else get in here and then we'll go ahead and grab at least one more and go ahead and begin to spin this down You can go ahead and take your nut. So we're gonna go ahead and take and put three of these on. So go ahead and take one, two, three washers and go ahead and put that on there and then you can go ahead and begin to spin this on
then go ahead and take that half inch. So you put three washers on, you put the new one on, and go ahead and take that half inch and spin it down. And it will have a little bit of room. So now that you have the three washers, go ahead and put your fourth washer here and go ahead and start spinning this down. And there will be just a little wiggle room or play room, which is totally fine. I then go ahead and take that three quarter inch and uh, snug that on down and go ahead and give it a test. Uh, then we'll go ahead and do the other side. So now we come to this side. You do want to test to make sure it's not too hot and it still is really hot. So I'm just going to get some water and spray it down. So this is the side we did last with welding and we'll just cool it off. crazy how fast water cools things off and it's room temperature. Same concept, we'll start with three washers just like that. Go ahead and get our tire and that Sharpie. Just like so. Go ahead and throw that on. And then we'll go ahead and spin this on down. And then give it one little nice little crank. And that right there is good. Those one those wheels are gonna be really nice. There's enough distance between that if you get mud or anything on it, you can still clean it, but it's not so wide like some of those Zuka carts that are like all the way out here. And so you have that ability to still get back in there, clean stuff out as needed. So as you can see, I have just the basic half inch nut on here, but I did buy these and they do come, which I necessarily don't like in a 10 pack, um, but they were 20 bucks. Could be a little bit more, a little bit net less now but they spin on really well and uh, we're gonna use those uh, as our nut here so we're gonna go ahead and spin that off and go ahead and spin this on and there still is a little extra on the outside so I am gonna take and cut this off I really don't necessarily want this poking me if I come by this and so one, two, three, at least four. So one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and do it on the fifth one. The blade here.
we'll go ahead and test that real quick, see if that will allow it to catch, and it does. And that right there allows you to get it hand tight, but not too tight. So that worked perfect. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We really, it's gonna be really hot, but we didn't really take off that many. As you can see, there's one, two, three, four, pretty much five little threads, but uh, that right there works really well. I probably am gonna clean that up just a touch more because I just noticed there is just a little bit on this side. I'm not just flatten that out. And they still spin on really well. You could put some Loctite on that too, but that still allows you to be able to do what you want to with it. So we'll come back over here to this side. Same concept as before. And one smart thing to do is probably, since you have 10 of these, put an extra one of these inside of your cart in case for some reason, hopefully it never does it, but it would fall off. At least you have some kind of protection there. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and test it. My guess is it's gonna be identical. Yeah, five. So one, two, three, four, five. And go ahead. And then we'll go ahead and try this out. And just like that, it tightens down really well. That worked super well. I hope you were able to see all that and kind of catch the steps. Um, again, I would probably keep one of these just inside one of the compartments just in case you ever do need it. So here is the finished product. This thing looks sweet. There's still a lot of things I wanna to do to it. But uh, I think that's all for this video. It's already gonna be a very, very long video. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed yet, please do so. And because this was a long video, just a couple of days, this is Ledgestone 2022 week, and I'm gonna give a giveaway because you've made it to the end of this video. Right here, Ledgestone Buzz Jawbreaker, signed by four of your favorite pros. I am at Ledgestone. You can tell that is Illinois, and uh, maybe you can't, but I can. And uh, gonna give this away, but it's through this Sunday at Ledgestone. You must pick it up at Ledgestone. I'll be willing to meet up uh, at the Fly Mart at the end of the week uh, on Sunday. So what you gotta do is you got to comment on this. Let's just have you do McBeast. And uh, on this video, then you also have to go to my Instagram and DM me. You gotta do both of them, do the same thing and uh you'll give me your phone number or whatever we'll find a time to meet up in the dm and uh, i'll give that away this week only ledgestone 2022 thank you guys so much for watching have a great day